believe we have the opportunity to wipe the slate clean and make a fresh start. And it's imperative because we have enormous pressures challenging our city. I say to all of you, three million strong, Chicago needs you. Let's all join together and bring this great city together. Well, first of all, Harold didn't want to run for mayor. He did not. The day before he was to announce, he hung me on my kitchen phone for 45 minutes telling me why he didn't want to run, because he thought he was a better, how he put it, he was a better litigator than he was an administrator. And because he just, he, just, he just didn't want to run. There were 17 people out there initially. I don't even remember who they all were. Some of them were serious, some of them weren't. But these names were all being floated. And somehow, they were really down to one. And that was Harold. And of course, the community just responded. I was to work at City Hall. Colonel Riley, who, who was one of Mayor Daly's right arms, and they were bringing the Pan American Games to Chicago. And he was also bringing the Queen of England and two or three other people in. And that was the beginning of special events for Chicago. But and I think now I look at special events and they have a hundred or so people and we had five. And at that time, certain jobs were assigned to certain wards. Harold had just finished Northwestern Law School. And when his father died, the thinking was Harold would get the job. Prosecutor, I guess it was at 48th Street. But he was so fresh out of school, out of law school, that they didn't think he was ready for that. So Ralph Metcalf, who was his commitment, traded the job and sent him down to City Hall, which is where I was. I cannot tell you how he and I began to talk. We just we we bonded. We really did. I happened to have been with him the night that he had just left a meeting with Mayor Daly, and he had gotten the okay for him to run for state rep, which had been his first office. Harold was an extremely private person, and I would wager you that that night he had a conversation that he didn't have with anybody else, and he wouldn't have had it with me except he was euphoric for the moment. And on the Dan Ryan going home, he just spilled his whole life out to me, from his father, his mother, his wife, the whole bit. We just talked about it, but he thought this was what he wanted, and this he felt he could make a mark. I didn't know his father, but his father had quite a reputation, and he was always referred to as Roy Washington's son, and he resented that. He didn't want that, you know, he didn't want it just to be known, and he felt this would be where he could make a mark, and of course he did. You know, Harold was president of the Young Democrats and um, for his ward. And to show you the kind of leadership that Harold had, out of that Young Democrat group, and I'm talking about not over a long period of time, I'm talking about the two years, said to give or take, that we were together with his leadership. Out of that little group, you got, you got John Strode, your county board president, Charles Freeman, the Illinois Supreme Court Justice, and Harold Washington as your mayor. All first major positions. Well, you know, Harold said, well, his motto was that he meant to be fair. Well, every politician says that. But uh, as if, for instance, every year each ward has, you know, the city has street paving, fixing, whatever you want to call it. And instead of singling out the eighth ward and say, I'm going to give you 20 blocks of paved or miles or whatever they call it. And if he had 100 miles and there were 50 wards, that was divided equally among all wards. I mean, whatever it was, if he gave, if, if everybody got five miles or 10 miles or whatever the amount was. And um, I think that fairness began to rub off. I started the Harold Washington Legacy Committee. Today, some of our greatest supporters are still those lakefront people who were with him. The name Harold is still magic in Chicago. And even the young people, the young millennium people, they just bug me to death. They want to know about Harold. They want to know about Harold. I find in them, they're looking 
but they don't want to hear this is the way we did it and it's the only way and if you don't do it our way it's not right now i find that from them and so we 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 have a great exchange we just talk and i bring them together sometimes and we just talk harold loved children he had no children of his own loved them if a child came up to talk to harold you just waited because harold was going to take time to talk to that child harold told the little boy that he was going to keep the seat until he grew up so he could be mayor. The little boy said, I don't want to be mayor. I want to be president. You'd be surprised at the people who have said to me, he gave me my start, you know, a but for him. I'll do anything you want now. I'm happy to have known him and to have been a beneficiary of, uh, of, of his leadership, really.